Later in the program, we're going to see a montage of clips that show Obama's sympathies for Islam, in his own words, okay? In his own words. And some, some <clears throat> fairly flabbergasting rewrites of history. Uh, but let's focus on Dr. Ben Carson right now. I have to applaud Dr. Carson and, and show my shock at Ted Cruz. Did you know that Ted Cruz, when pressed on this, did not defend Carson? He said, no, there shouldn't, the, the Constitution says there's no religious oath necessary, so it would not be a litmus test for me to determine if someone was a president. Boy, Mr. Cruz, Senator Cruz, I think you, you, you messed up on that one. But anyway, let's play a portion of the interview that Ben Carson did on NBC. Let me uh, wrap this up by finally dealing with what's been going on, Donald Trump, and, he, and a deal with a, uh, uh, a questioner that, uh, that claimed that the president was Muslim. Let me ask you the qu question this way. Should a president's faith matter? Should your faith matter to voters? Oh, well, I guess it depends on what that faith is. If, if it's inconsistent uh, with the values and principles of America, then of course it should matter. But uh, if it fits within the realm of, uh, of America and consistent with the Constitution, mm -hmm. uh, no problem. So do you believe that uh, Islam is consistent with the Constitution? Uh, no, I don't. I do not. So I, I would not advocate that we put a Muslim in charge of this nation. I absolutely would not agree with that. All right. So God bless him. God bless him. In another point in the interview, he mentioned that, that Shiite Muslims have a word, it's called taqiyya, which is the deliberate deception of hiding their Muslim faith, hiding their objectives until they get in a place where they can accomplish their objectives, all right? And I was pleased that he used the word. Uh, Sunnis don't, don't use that word. And I will explain the Sunni-Shiite split in a minute. But, but here's the bottom line. <clears throat> if that journalist who asked the question of Ben Carson had actually done research and spent maybe an hour or two hours reading the constitutions of Saudi Arabia or Pakistan, reading some elements of Sharia law written by Muslims, all right, then he would in fact know that Islam the tenets of Islam, as expressed in the Quran, the Hadith, and ultimately in Sharia law, are incompatible with the United States Constitution. For example, Muhammad taught repeatedly that there are three instances in which a, a Muslim can face death. One is for unlawful sexual relations. Two is if he apostatizes. Okay? Three is if he kills another Muslim, murders another Muslim. So, by the way, he said specifically, if he murders another Muslim, it's not if he murders a human being, so if he murders another Muslim, then he could face the death sentence. It's illicit sexual relations and apostas apostatizing. What that means is that a Muslim faces a death sentence if they say, I now believe in Jesus, and I want to share my faith in Jesus. All right? These are capital crimes. That's inconsistent with the U.S. Constitution. So, of course, Islam is inconsistent with the U.S. Constitution. And this is what Islam has taught from the beginning, okay? That's why it is a crime in Saudi Arabia or in Pakistan or in Afghanistan to apostatize. For a Muslim to become a Christian is a criminal act in those countries. So this journalist, if he knew just a little bit, if he was responsible enough and studious enough to look at the facts on the ground as presented by Muslims, he would never be insulting the rest of us and pressing Ben Carson. It's, it's, it's absurd. All right. <clears throat> Let's talk quickly oh, uh, about Shiite-Sunni split. I'm going to go just a whisker long here. Ben Carson in the interview said that the Shiites have a word for the deception. It's called taqiyya. The Sunnis also practice it, but they don't have a name for it. And there's a squabble between the Sunnis and the Shiites over the legitimacy, the levels of legitimacy. The Sunni-Shiite split happened when the first generation of people right after Muhammad died. And Shiite is an abbreviation for Shia al-Ali, which means the party of Ali. 
Those were Muslims who believed that Muhammad's son-in-law, who was also his cousin, was the only legitimate successor to Muhammad and that it has to be a blood heir of Muhammad. They wanted a dynasty like the kings of Europe. The Sunnis said, no, the successor of Muhammad, the next leader, can be anybody, just as long as they're a good Muslim. So they had Abu Akar, and then Umar, and then Uthman, and then Ali. They call them the rightly guided caliphs. The caliph means successor. The four rightly guided caliphs, those four, companions of the Prophet is what they're called. Those are who the Sunnis believe. Yes, Ali was one of them, but it doesn't have to be him. The Shiites say, oh, no, 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 no. It had to be Ali next and one of his sons, etc. Well, his two sons, Hassan and Hussein, were both murdered. And Hussein, in an epic battle, what, would have, what could have been a battle, he was actually, him and all of his men were surrounded and killed one by one in the desert by Sunnis. So the hatred between Sunnis and Shiites goes all the way back to the first century. There's the split. There's the violence. And by the way, Barack Obama's middle name is Hussein. Barack Hussein Obama, which is a Shiite treasure. And I don't understand. I still have not been able to find out if his dad, the Muslim, was a Shiite Muslim or a Sunni Muslim. And I would sure love to know. If anyone can find that data and have it be confirmable, please let me know. In the next segment, we're going to show you the sympathies of our current president towards Islam. You won't want to miss this. <laughs> Christians must be involved in government, period. If Christians weren't involved in government, we would not have a United States of America. And there have been brilliant Christian minds over the centuries, such as John Locke, who is called the philosopher of American liberty. He was quoted by Clarence Thomas in his recent dissent on the homosexual marriage decision. If we don't understand John Locke, we don't understand the founding of America. I want to send you this book and my book, The Sword, subtitled The Blessing of Righteous Government and The Overthrow of Tyrants. I want to send you these two books for a gift of whatever you can afford. Pay the $8 shipping and handling, which does not cover our costs, and then give a gift of whatever size you want and we'll send you these books. If you cannot afford anything but the $8, can't even afford that, write us a note and we'll send them to you for free. I want you to have these books so that you can be better equipped to fight in the political arena. Come on, order them today.